I'm Katie Bickham, and I am going to talk to you today about my poem, Granny Wise Never Misses a Mardi Gras Feast. So I'll begin by reading the poem, and then um, I'll talk to you about it a little bit. Granny Wise Never Misses a Mardi Gras Feast. But that don't mean I'm Catholic, I'd like you to know. Ain't got knees built for kneeling, not a thing to confess. There's plenty of sacrifice starving us all without acting a martyr and swearing off meat. There's a feast to prepare in the Terrebonne heat, ripe with cayenne and thyme, and the kids and their kids all play under my feet on the floors warped with rain, their damp odor the same as when I was a girl. The night comes to a boil. If them Catholics fear hell, hell, just send them down here. I'll be damned if Death Valley can't match it for heat. Seven feet below sea level, bugs like a plague. I don't care for the doctrine, but some truths are fixed. The bouquet of a place several hundred years old, where the recipe smells start to pickle the wood, where the hurricanes claw at the oaks and your bones. Forty days in the desert ain't got shit on a woman's long life in the deep south abyss. No fit place but for those bubbled up with unquenchable dry mouth desire for the saltier life to be swollen with things. We dump crawfish on newsprint, all stuck to our clothes. Let them starve in the desert. The world's made for feasting. I instruct the young children on cracking the shells and rub ice on their faces, our mouths all on fire. There are ways the wind blows make you feel like a ghost. And I wonder how many good storms are left in me. How many more pots of dark rue, loaves of bread, and what they'll all do to remember me then. The mosquitoes are starved in the valley of death. And as manners dictate, we oblige with our blood. Okay, so um, this actually was the first poem that I ever had published, and it happened in 2013, so that's seven years ago. And um, so if you were to look up some of the poetry that I've published in the last year, it would sound really different because poets' voices definitely change just like your you know, favorite musician probably sounded really different on their first album or whatever. Um, but this was a kind of a phase where I was really getting into writing um, what are called persona poems. And a persona poem is kind of like a dramatic, dramatic monologue. It's where you're writing in the voice of a character. And so in this case, um, I've kind of made this composite uh, or combination of all of my grandmothers into this semi-fictional character, Granny Wise. And um, I had a few different things that I was combining in terms of the symbolism in the poem. When we write poetry, um, we're often thinking about what's called an image set. And what that means is that, yeah, you can pull like, you know, a cloud metaphor from here and a flower metaphor from there and a car metaphor here, but none of that stuff goes together. So when we're thinking about writing image sets, we're trying to think about like using symbolism throughout the poem that all goes together. And so um, this poem actually was initially called The Last Supper before I changed the name of it. But you can see the, the remnants of all of that Last Supper imagery. So there's like the breaking of bread, and um, instead of wine, there's the blood, you know, the blood of Christ sort of thing going on. So it's very much like a, uh, and it's set um, during this like kind of Catholic festival period. Um, so all of that stuff is intentional and the image set throughout the poem is supposed to be kind of like a religious one, but it's a religious one that's being kind of picked at and, and not made fun of, but you know, she's kind of like turning all of those religious symbols on her head. So um, instead of the blood of Christ, you have like the b blood that mosquitoes are sucking out of people and instead of bread, you have crawfish. Um, and she's also uh, very much like a Southern Baptist kind of matriarch, so she's not feeling the whole Catholic tradition anyway, she's had it. Um, and in many ways, like her character is supposed to be like a kind of a symbolic Louisiana matriarch at, at her heart. Um, in terms of like technical stuff, the poem is written in a particular meter, um, and a meter is like a, a rhythm. So if you know anything about music, you know, like usually music is written in four, four time, like four beats, four beats, four beats. Um, poetry has 
specific rhythm sets as well. And um, this is a pretty unusual rhythm or meter, and, and that rhythm is called um, anapestic, which means that the pattern of beats goes bum 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 So all the way through the poem, you can kind of read, it's like a waltz pattern. Um, so Granny Wise never misses a Mardi Gras feast, and so you can kind of peg that hard beat every third syllable. Um, and that's supposed to give the poem kind of a, a musical quality. Um, the poem doesn't rhyme, but you'll notice that if you're reading any rhyming poems in your classes, that all the rhyming poems do have a meter. Um, and so again, when I was first starting out writing poetry, I was really, really interested in poems that had meter and rhythm and, and rhyme. And I don't so much do that anymore, but I know how to. Um, so I would love to welcome you that if you have any questions about uh, the poem that you would like to ask me, you can leave comments in the YouTube thread below. Um, and I'll be happy to answer those. And um, it was a pleasure reading for you. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.